this look? Because yeah. I was watching you when you had your meltdown about not being able to find anything to wear. <laughs> we missed our first show on Saturday because I had a absolute fashion meltdown. Oh, wow. Didn't I tell her we're yes. going? <laughs> we're getting ready to go live. We are. Okay, hold on. It, it'll be on Facebook. Facebook. We it, we're live. We are live, yes. Perform the fashion, Jen. We are live. Oh, okay. So everybody. Yeah, everybody on. can see. I mean, people are probably starting to join. So come in. Um, okay. Liz, you were saying you what happened on Saturday now? Well, I'm yes. Yeah, so I never have fashion week meltdowns. Like I always have, you know, my outfits out. Um, I don't necessarily know like what order, you know, I'm going to wear them mm -hmm. in, but you know, I always have everything like together. I have my jewelry, you know, in my little tackle box, it's like I can see everything. I'm very organized. Imagine a five-year-old little girl standing inside of her closet, pulling everything down like this, like, ah! oh, no. <laughs> oh, you, you had, you had a true, like, right. A true meltdown. We had a diva fit, darling. <laughs> Listen, I, I love it. I love like, it. Like a, me on top of a pile of clothes, like crying. All I can think of, mouth. all I can think of is Joan Crawford, right? Just like tossing everything. Mm -hmm. Listen. Um, but I am so, so excited to have you co-host our Met Gala watch party. Um, of course, our theme is coming in hot. So it's all about the high fashion. It's all about the high drama, the jewels, the beauty looks. We're going to have an amazing show this evening. Um, if you are watching and joining in, I am partnering with our fellow co-host, Mr. Andrew Brown. Hello, hello. And the gorgeous, the doll, the diva, the style expert extraordinaire, Miss Liz Everett. Hello. <laughs> it's so good to have you co-host with us tonight. Well, I am so excited and I'm super excited to still be here in New York City. Um, I went down earlier and kind of took a pre-look for us at what all That's was happening. Exciting. So it's really cool. So we've got some great insider scoop tonight, guys. So perfect, perfect. hey guys, so tune in, stay tuned. In a few seconds, we are going to start our show. Absolutely. So before we do that, we obviously have to keep keep the production going with this. <laughs> Right, get your phones ready because it's about to get hot. hot. And also, if you have something to drink, those of you who are joining us, if you are of age, please pull out a champagne or a wine or your preferred beverage, a Perrier, for example, because we are <laughs> doing a Met Gala watch party live. So right now we're doing our pre-show event from 5 to 5.30. Of course, you can join in and watch us now, or you can also watch the official Met Gala watch party being put on by Vogue magazine. And you can do this two ways. If you follow Vogue magazine on Twitter, they're streaming the feed there, or you can watch it online at VogueMagazine.com slash Met hyphen Gala. And at 5.30, they're going to go live with their mm -hmm. two hosts, Ileana Glazer and Kiki Palmer. And we're so excited to just be able to put this on and share yeah. our expertise and our knowledge of fashion's history, as well as this year's exhibit. So, of course, you know we have Liz Everett on with us today. She is in New York 
Liz, talk to us a little bit earlier. You were out across the street from the Met watching them get set up. Talk to us about that. Yes. Um, I wanted to go see, you know, you guys, we always see it on television, right? And we always see, you know, the after loops and everything. But I wanted to see it up close and personal um, before, like what all is happening? Um, you know, how is everything prepared? And it was really intricate. Um, it was fabulous to see how um, everything was shut down on one side. They had a huge security team on both sides on the outer, but then they were building. First of all, I did not realize how tiny the red carpet actually is. Yeah. 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 In my mind, as I'm sure in many of our viewers mind, I truly thought that it was some humongous, huge, you know, thing. And it really is about um, a sidewalk and a half. Okay. Printed, and then the red carpet going up the stairs. So you maybe have about um, 100 to 150 feet of actual like red carpet length. Mm. So my thought process, you guys, and I'd love to get your feedback on this. Imagine trying to coordinate all those intros. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's listen, all of us have worked in either pageantry or production. And I will tell you, corralling all of these people. But remember, a lot of these celebrities are coming with a team, right? right. So it's you've got to plan for me. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you 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 are really corralling. You're kind of like you know, like hey, everybody, let's you know. And then of course, all of the amazing shots that we're going to see tonight that are of course going to go on Harper's and Women's Wear Daily, and of course Vogue. Mm -hmm. We're not going to see all of those people, correct? Right. So in that split second you're not going to see all of it happening. And I think that's the magic of, you know, the Met Gala. That's the magic of just production and having a really tight team, which we know um, Vogue and the museum have definitely a tight, tight team. Absolutely. But what I love the most is that this year we are really celebrating. The theme is amazing. Um, Lexicon. Mm -hmm. Right, American fashion. American, and it's in two parts this year. Correct. Generally, the Met Gala is usually one and done, first Monday in May, and it's in two separate parts, which is really exciting. Two opportunities to get to see two exhibits, really, right. that are staying right. on display right. all the way through um, September of next year. So that's super exciting. And so, of course, m many of you know, with Form to Fashion, Andrew is our resident historian. So he loves all the facts and all the details. And so for those of you who are watching along, uh, we're going to tell you really how the Met Gala that we know came to be. Absolutely. And Andrew's got a few fun facts and a few really great things that he's going to share with us this evening okay. to kind of keep everybody in the know. Because more than anything, Form to Fashion is definitely educational program so we lead with education first so without further ado drew give us some fun facts about the met so fun facts about the met i'm sure as everyone knows we just kind of refer to the met gala as just the met right. or the met gala but it's really an intricate part in the costume institute and the metropolitan museum of art in new york mm -hmm. so the met gala was actually began in 1937 as the museum of costume art and it was started by Irene Lu Lewison. And in 50, excuse me, in 1946, mm -hmm. it merged with the Metropolitan Museum of Art, which was already an established museum. Both of those merged together. And then it became the Costume Institute, which is what we know of it now today. It then became a curatorial department in 1959, which means it became in charge of curating exhibitions for the Met. And so we do know that there are special people involved. If you're mm -hmm. into the arts or into the museums, right. you know that there are curators that come in and put together these collections and they work with a wide range of artists Correct. to Correct. bring their art to the museums. So from 1972 all the way to 1989, the famous Diana Vreeland was a special consultant and yes. she was basically bringing in all those exhibitions, bringing in the theme mm -hmm. and really in charge of keeping all of the 
costume institutes pieces together Correct. as that special costume. Now, for some of you that are younger, you may not know who Deanna Vreeland is, but I am pretty sure those of you that follow fashion know who Mr. Andre Leon Talley is. Deanna Vreeland was really a mentor to him. Absolutely. Almost like his second grandmother um, that he talks about in his newest book, The Chiffon Trenches. Absolutely. So she made a very, very... Uh, huge contribution, if you will, to the Met Gala um, and really getting Vogue's buy-in. Correct. She she is kind of who got them in and really started working it as a true fundraiser. Um, and she was a brilliant woman. Absolutely. Um, who, of course, trained one of the most iconic men in fashion. Correct. Uncle Leon. Correct. So it was he that was really his first shot yeah he, he yeah got in graduated from he did grad school at brown university um studying french he went over to europe at after working with mm -hmm, her and mm -hmm. was really able to show his knowledge about the fashion industry so she was legendary in our industry as well as for him after Diana Vreeland passed away, it became Richard Martin. And so mm -hmm. for 10 years, he was the um, curator in charge, if you will. It wasn't that name at that time, right. but he was in charge of essentially curating. Uh, from 2000 to 2016, it was Harold Coda. So you might remember if you've seen the first Monday in May, the documentary, you would have seen Harold Coda on there and how intricately his role he played with the museum as curator in charge. When he left, Andrew Bolton, who is the current Wendy Wu curator in charge, took over and he has been doing a phenomenal job ever since. So those are some of the important people that you definitely do need to know. But Liz, do you know who actually started what we call the Met Gala? I don't. I would love to know that. That's a <laughs> Okay, so Andrew Scola. Okay, so the Met Gala was started by legendary publicist Eleanor Lambert. I know Eleanor Lambert. That name I do know. Absolutely. The Battle of Versailles. The Battle of Versailles. She's very she was a very famous publicist and kind of did a lot of things old school, of course, being back before technology really took hold of the fashion industry. She was a fantastic publicist and she's really well known for putting the Battle of Versailles together and pinning the great fashion designers with great American designers of the 70s at that time. So she started it in 1948 as a way to raise money mm -hmm. and to have that annual exhibition come every single year. Now the Met Gala is the primary source of funding right. for the Met for the Costume Institute because that, of course, as some people know, but not everybody knows, the price tag just to go to the Met, <sighs> is astronomical. You've got to okay. have money, money, money just to get your ticket. <laughs> bag you know? of money. Correct. So Correct. the last figure that we had. <laughs> the price just went up. Correct. <laughs> the, <laughs> right, right. So the last figure we had was $30,000 was the essentially entrance ticket. To, to attend the Met Gala. And that was just to go. So if you wanted to add in um, a contribution after that, you certainly could. But a lot of the celebrities that you see on the carpet, they're paying to be there. Well, let's just think about this. When this all first started, it was $50. Correct. That was the first price $50. Oh my gosh. Don't you just want to wish that you could just go back in time just to pay mm. the $50? I know. Yes. <laughs> no more. So then famous couturier Balenciaga, Cristobal Balenciaga, passed away in 1973. That became the first exhibition theme. Okay. 1963 was a dedication to Balenciaga. He was essentially the master of us all, as Christian Dior put it. He was probably the best couturier that fashion has ever seen. Correct. So that's when themes began. And every year, a theme has just been put in place all the way up until now. Now, some of them have been quirky, guys. Okay, so um, which years have been quirky? Do you remember? Some of the more quirkier years. Um, punk. Punk. Mm -hmm. Punk was kind of quirky. Um, but then there have been some that have been super endearing, right? And, and memorable. 
um, and important for the times that we're in, like Savage Beauty. Absolutely. When we lost, you know, one of who I believe was one of the greatest designers um, of our time, Alexander McQueen, who I think was an absolute genius with my favorite medium, feathers. Um, everybody knows I love a good feather ball gown. Um, but Savage Beauty was probably one of my favorite. Correct. And Savage Beauty was from 2011. Mm -hmm. And so they really had to put that together very well. Um, for me, some of the quirky ones, 2012 was um, Scaparelli and Prada. They had an impossible conversation. So if you know Mutual Prada, she is so ahead of her time. That's yeah. Sometimes it's kind of hard to really, yeah, really know where she is and what she's doing. And it's it's not necessarily nice to look at at the beginning, but it always grows on you. When I think Scaparelli is is definitely avant-garde. Correct. Right? Yeah. You're going to get a lot of everything. Um, but then also just kind of bringing in the art piece, she worked very closely with Dolly. Correct. So yeah. that surrealism. That, you know what I mean? So you're going to get this really eclectic look, but when you look at the detail and the attention to the high fashion, right, which, which is phenomenal that Scaparelli does with flowers and architecture mm -hmm. and just even with shaping and draping it's it's great like kids check it out yeah. go back and look at some of the met galas of the past and really kind of join in join the conversation tell us what some of your favorite looks are um but up next we're going to start discussing our favorite looks of all time absolutely so guys stay tuned because this conversation is definitely going to get hot. Liz, do you have some themes that you remember that stood out? Um, from, well, I would have to say that honestly, and I think I'm a little biased, um, but okay. my favorite two themes, and I'll tell you why I'm biased, um, is definitely Heavenly Bodies and No mm -hmm. Time Camp. And mm -hmm. I think that one of the reasons that I just loved those two so much was because I got to go to those exhibits okay. and see how they were built out. And I'm always still studying my craft, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so seeing everything, um, being able to look at it, being so close, you can almost touch it. You know, it changes your connect. It, it changed my connection to the themes, you know what I mean? Even like um, Chaparelli, being able to see the lobster dress in person yeah. uh, when it was yeah. at the Dolly Museum, you know, I, it, it changed my connection to fashion when I saw how those two artists work together. So my two favorite themes from Met Gala are definitely, is definitely would have to be Heavenly Bodies and Notes on Camp. Um, notes on Camp in specific for me walking into the final part of the um, exhibit and mm -hmm. just seeing this these walls of fabulous pop culture over the yes. top yes. wow garments that you know when i was a little girl that's what made me love fashion because i was mm -hmm. into mm -hmm. tina turner and dolly parton and you know i was do dancing to copacabana and barry manilow i was not <laughs> She has always been on this plane, um, but it just is, it's, it's something, fashion is something that if you immerse yourself and learn, it yeah. is not what is retail, it is more. It is art, it is structure, it is beauty, and it is just so deep. And so, yeah, those are my two favorite themes and why I love fashion all in one. <laughs> and I will tell you this, just talking about last year's or the years, you know, that we saw the most previous Met Gala with camp. I think that a lot of people did not know what that was going in. Mm -hmm. um, but I think being a part of the LGBTQ plus community, mm -hmm. you know, we kind of understand camp, right? We we know what campy right. looks like. And, and it's yeah. an exaggeration really of oneself. Like if yeah. you could go all out it, all to the wall, like just bear it all on the floor, get all of your tens, um, this is camp, right? You you are going for the big hair, mm -hmm. the big boa, the feathers. But what I loved about it, it was truly an expression of everyone's most fabulous self. Right. You could really just do it and go for it. 
And so many people, I think that year went really hard. Mm -hmm. I think, I think everybody went really hard. I think kind of have to give it to everybody. There really wasn't a look that I was like, "Mm." right. It just all worked. And I thought that was really one of the most beautiful ones because we got to see everyone's true nature. Like, who are you? Who was your fashion monster? And of course, Gaga takes the cake, right? But we'll we'll talk more about that. (laughs) So I want to start off um, talking about top five favorite looks in no specific order. Okay. But in terms of timeline, I think when we talk about camp and we talk about a true style icon at the Met, we have to talk about Cher. Absolutely. Right? So for me, my number one historic icon is Cher and Bob Mackie. Uh, You can see it on the screen right now. This was really, I mean, the beginning of the new dress that we're all like seeing. We see something similar to this vein year after year after year. And I think what I love about it most is it's Cher, and this really is just what Cher does. Correct. Right? But it's also quintessential Bob Mackie. Um, I don't know if you guys can really see that great beading detail and those feathers. That is signature to Bob Mackie. Absolutely. This was from 1974. Mm-hmm. So, as you know, I do like a little sparkle, and I do love feathers. If you guys remember when Andrew and I used to design, Mm -hmm. feathers was my thing. It was a big, intricate part um, of our aesthetic and one of our greatest collections that we did um, back in 2011. Look it up on YouTube, guys. You'll see it. So, Drew, what about you? So, for me, there's so many. And I I really don't think that we can do some big justice when it comes to how many people there are, how many great looks there are. Mm -hmm. Um, For me, this one came from camp as well. So this was 2019. And you may remember this. This is Zendaya wearing Tommy Hilfiger. And for me, it really is the technology. Okay. She walked in the dress. Of course, you can see the dress is blue, um, a little iridescent, but it lit up. Mm-hmm. And so to incorporate that technology in with fashion was phenomenally done. So yeah. this is one of those top looks for me. And really anything Zendaya does, but this is one of those top Oh, looks yeah. She's an I icon. Have. We're definitely going to see a lot from her tonight. I cannot. I don't think we're going to see her tonight. No. I don't think we're going to see her tonight. Disappointed. Yeah. Um, but we will see more of her past looks tonight for sure. Liz, you had um, an icon from the past. I definitely do. Um, I, I, too, picked Cher. <laughs> Who else? You know, um, I just feel like he fits her so well. You he know, does, yeah. From the turn back time video when he did the bodysuit that she had on, and originally she was just gonna wear the bodysuit, but um when she put the, the jean jacket over the top of it, you know, it made it a little bit more alluring, you know. And so listen. Cher for me is always going to be a number one when it comes to fashion because she serves. She understands. She does. Life. She gives you what the children need to give. Bravo. Yes, Miss Cher. Lay away, honey. Okay. <laughs> but can we just stay on this look really quick? Absolutely. Here's, here's what I love the most about this look. So when we were like collecting data and talking about who, who do we think was iconic, right? If we really just look at, again, the beating mm-hmm. and the detail. And this picture really doesn't do it justice. No, it no. doesn't. It, but I think sh- we knew Cher to kind of wear her hair down, we right? Did. That that middle part and bone straight that Kim Kardashian and the Kardashian sisters kind of really rocked, that was Cher's like signature. moment. That was her signature thing. But to see her hair pulled back in a simple chignon, really just gives this dress even more drama. Mm -hmm. And I think I could see something like this on the carpet, you know, tonight. Like, I'm really hoping that we're going to see sheer cutouts and, you know, long, elegant, structured gowns. But Bob Mackie got it. As I walked down, um, 
as I walked down Fifth Avenue today, uh -huh. um, from the Prada store to D and G, you know, elegance and decadence is back, right? And it I is back it. at the highest level. So a gown like this would be a very signature move and it would be right on target if you're talking about, you know what I mean? Really like mm -hmm. the resurgence mm -hmm. of glamour that is happening today. Not glamour, honey. Glamour, glamour. is buying a store. Glamour is understanding the more that is. Yeah, the more. Oh my God, I love that. I love that. And so, I mean, now, kind of going in, keeping the same vein of share okay. and pieces that have inspired share. My next one up would have to be none other. And I know people are going to say that I'm biased, okay. right? But I I am a part of the beehive, okay? So okay. listen, if you're watching, what year was watch that? your mouth. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this was Beyonce and Givenchy in 2011. And what I loved about that the most, is that, is that one, is that 2011? You have a couple of Beyonce's. I on do. This I list. have That's a couple crazy. of Beyonce's on this list. So we'll start with this one. Um, it was the gradation of feathers for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? Just that color, that pop of purple on that red, mm -hmm. I mean, gives me very berry. Very right? berry. <laughs> very berry was the name of a collection um that I did when I was in retail. I was gonna say that's a very old Ugh, mm, and, and that collection was terrible. But this I loved. I love this. I know Liz, you chose um Queen B as well. Hello. No, no. Um and, and it was great. <laughs> but I think again, looking at that cutout inspiration. It was sexy. She had, I don't know if you guys can see it. She had like a full glove kind of number. Mm -hmm. That was really good. And again, she pulled her hair back, right? We're so used to seeing Beyonce with big hair. But with a dress like that, you really let the gown lead. Mm -hmm. And so I love, love, love that. Liz, let's talk more about hair and beauty. Well, I think that, you know, one thing that people don't think about is the the literal line that a gown creates and then how you have to go back in for the hair and the beauty look right to really allow the woman to wear the gown and not the gown to wear the woman correct Absolutely. correct you know? correct so anything from 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 thinking about okay do we want to do a little bit of a color pop in the eye and then bring the lip back so that the eye and the gown is the focus okay then do we um do uh you know a razor cut bang where do, where does the you know where does it hit on the face to contour the face because things that people don't think about too is like for instance like where the bang where the top part of your curtain bang sits that mm -hmm. contours your face see how this part of my face looks a little bit wider but if i take this up a little bit it looks thinner because i raised that up you know so there's a lot that goes in there are makeup tests um, tech make they call them makeup tech tests right that go in where they they do the face and the hair how it's going to be the day that the day of um, I believe in 2019 Gaga's uh, makeup artist said that they went through hundreds of different lashes to find just the right one for that Brandon Maxwell look and it was beautiful because you really build and curate these looks so that they truly are a memorable work of art. And so you start at the top of the head and work all the way down to the toes with that. And so often we only think about the, the you know, just the garment, but as you brought up with Cher and as we just talked about with Beyonce, the ability to kind of pull that hair back, right? Mm -hmm. And what also did, both of them had a center part and what a center part does is it showcases that you have a very symmetrical face, right? Mm -hmm. Because when we say to someone, oh, you're so beautiful, we're actually saying, oh, you're so symmetrical. <laughs> you're so, so balanced. You know, there's <laughs> really science for all of this, guys, you know, which is one reason why we all have such high respect for incredible designers and makeup artists um, who really are bringing these stars to life on the red mm -hmm. carpet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people don't realize that uh, people like Colin Carter, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Who's a phenomenal stylist. Um, no longer is he up and coming. He is here. He is doing his thing. He is really kind of bringing that resurgence to fashion and hip hop. Like Correct. he's making that connection again um, and doing a really good job at it. 
and I think what I love the most, um, and I think this was on your list of one of your top five, was Cardi B, mm. right? Her breakout, her breakout moment. But I think when we talk about support and who is behind the look, we've got to give credit to Colin Carter. We do. Right, guys? Know that name. He was behind assisting and styling this look for Cardi B, where she looked absolutely gorgeous. And that Head relationship toe. really started. Stunning moment. Yeah. It really started when he put her in Vintage Theory Mugler. Yeah. Yeah. And for the, the VMAs. For the VMAs. And the funny story behind that is he just sent a DM, which before Instagram and technology, you kind of had to have the in. Yeah. You had to know yeah. who to call. You had to have some type of connection. But he just sent a DM and they followed up. He reached out. He kept communicating back and forth and he presented his ideas and he didn't stop until he got exactly what he wanted. Yeah. And yeah. when she walked out, I mean, everybody can remember, oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. So if you remember that look from the 95 collection and you're like, that's Cardi, that's almost 20 years old. Oh my gosh. And to see the evolution of the teamwork that they put together is amazing. Yeah. But I think, again, looking at that red number, um, it almost kind of just gives you this fantasy. I mean, of course, it's like this kind of goose down puffer. Mm -hmm. But the silhouette of her head kind of covering all of her hair. And again, really honing in on the beauty of Cardi's face was huge for me. Then, Correct. of course, it had all of these amazing crystal beading and details on it. And so one of my absolute favorite looks, um, but of course, kind of paying homage and respecting those who are behind these stars, Colin Carter is definitely a name that we do not want to forget. Absolutely. So guys, stay tuned. We are going to be streaming live. So of course, the Met Gala is going to be starting very, very soon. Um, Liz, who was someone else that was on your list? Well, Andrew and I both had Rihanna, 2019, Sun we Goddess. We all had Rihanna. So let's, just, just, let's... Sun Goddess Couture, you know. And, this and, is know, Rihanna, guys. <laughs> and Go Pay. Go Pay, yes. And yeah. Go Pay, it... I think this was probably one of the most memed looks um, of all time for the Met. And I think for good and bad reasons, right? It was the pizza, it was eggs, it was, mm -hmm. you know, a Beauty and the Beast meme. But I think when you really think about Couture and who GoPay is and what they do, this was absolutely stellar. It was I mean, I, I I couldn't stop looking at it. The fur, the applique, the beading, the length. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, she came in late, Correct. right? She came in late, just in time as to make should. that grand entrance, as she should have. And the king of capes and robes, Uncle Leon, took note. And she explained of how many artisans worked on that garment at the time. And I think it really was a moment. It was a moment for pop culture. I think it really cemented Rihanna. She was already a rising star with CFDA and, mm -hmm. you know, but this cemented her. This was like, yeah, take note. She is going to continue to make waves. Um, congratulations to her on all of her achievements this year um, with Fenty Beauty. But yes. I think we all agree that Rihanna's look that year in Go Pay, from her hair to the headpiece to the fuchsia cocktail dress that she wore underneath, it was all done absolutely stellar. It was done so well. Liz, for, what about that look for you did it? Well, I love that it was a maximalist look, you know, so many times we only think about minimalist looks being done mm -hmm. well, but I love that it was a maximalist look that was done very well. Um, Go pay, paid special attention to small, all of the small details, you know, I how, agree. how, how one fabrication worked into the next. Um, and her posing in the garment was just phenomenal. 
which a lot of people don't realize you have to practice those poses. Yes. You know, people don't yes. come out on the red carpet and they just look great because they just naturally have it. Having it factor is having an opportunity to really work on and, you know, kind of knead the dough, if you will, of your charisma, right. you know, and, and your confidence and your courage and really knowing where to put your hands, um, you know, and if we're talking about past icons who led mm -hmm. to this icon, we have women like Mae West who had yeah. a, thumb, a thumb stitch, you know, sewn into each dress so that she always had the exact same uh, posture and body line in every photo because she knew she had visual brand. This is way before people are talking about themselves as a brand. And so you, women like Mae West and Tina Turner and Diana Ross, they lead to this brilliant icon named Rihanna um, that we celebrate today. Oh my God, I love that. I love that and it's so true that really there is there was a school and there still is a school of 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 thinking and of posing um ladies if you have worked with the three of us in pageantry you know that this is a big deal for us absolutely right but what i think it does is it translates into other opportunities mm -hmm. right and these actresses and these models and these stars really are taking this seriously because not only do they know that one bad pose or one bad photo um, could be disastrous, right? But they also understand the importance in the relationship of the designers, Correct. right? Who they're wearing, um, the relationships that they're having, getting that good shot, because this really does help set the tone. But more than anything, what makes tonight exciting is it's almost like a finale yeah. and a close to Fashion Week. Well, it is the right, of it, and and so I think what happens is now it becomes even more important, right? right? That you get that Agreed. shot because it's like, who's going to be wearing, you know, this season? Who's going to be wearing something from the archives? Who's going to be wearing something custom? Tonight is going to be a big night. Not only let me ask of, you guys. Go ahead. Are there any uh, what designers have you never seen on the red carpet before? who are up and coming so like for me i would die love to and be just i would i uh, i would lose my mind if i saw sergio hudson on the runway or Laquan yes Smith. so that's my answer that i, that, I, 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 I shout out to charles <laughs> I cry. if i see something by sergio or by laquan on the runway i'm going to lose my mind and I'm so gonna again start, i'm going to start crying <laughs> so I will say this. I I really I I 100% agree again. Shout out to Mr. Charles Fields and uh Sergio Hudson. They are phenomenal. Um but Laquan Smith, I remember when he first came out, we mm -hmm. were all sewing in our bedrooms when he was sewing in his grandmother's, you know, basement or home, cranking out this gorgeous corset and I I distinctly remember um the jacquard and brocade corsets that he was making at that time. Yes. Would love to see them, but I will tell you this. I wanna see some things pulled out of some designer archives. I mean, mm. people have found some great Patrick Kelly. That's my answer. Right? I, I would love to see Patrick Kelly tonight, right? I would love to see someone pay homage to these amazing and brilliant black designers from the past. Absolutely. I mean, there were so many. Yes. Um, so if we take it back, but I will say this, um, Mr. Pyre Moss, mm -hmm. Kirby Come Jean has did the damn thing, excuse my language, um, but there's no other way to say it. Yeah. His breakout moment, having his show at Madam C.J. Walker's home mm -hmm. was iconic and historic all in one. And then to be invited by the French Federation Correct. to do a culture correction is beyond anything absolutely there's, there's only been a handful on one hand you can count the americans who have officially shown couture and so i mean there were some critics right some people loved it some people hated it but i think for me as an african-american creative and artist it was a moment and i think collectively we all have to stop and celebrate the, the moment, fact that yeah. it was a true monumental moment absolutely. it was historic in fashion it was historic for the culture um, he truly, truly represented, and we have seen um, him and 
Lena Waithe mm -hmm. uh, at a gala. So he has definitely represented. So again, we're so proud of him and what he's doing. Um, but those that's I think we're pretty much in sync with who we would love to see. Yeah. Um, and I think that's like our fantasy. If we could play fantasy football, this is fantasy fashion. Fantasy, you know, <laughs> build, <laughs> build your team. Um, up next, we have a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant woman um, who is probably one of my closest friends, um, Miss Anna Fuller, who is absolutely, I mean, she's a genius. Yeah. When we were designing, there she's were a genius. times where we could not get it right, if you will, or we would be making something and we knew what we wanted to do, but we just could not do it at all. Yeah. And Anna would come in and just famously like push us out of the way and she would say, I I've got it. Don't I've got it. About it. I think, I mean, when we talk about designer collaborations, right? Like like McQueen and Philip Treacy mm -hmm. and and just all of the things that that he has done. She's the Daphne Guinness to my Alexander McQueen. Um, so without further ado, I want to introduce to the world and Facebook, my dear friend, Anna, um, who has recreated, uh, a mini Kovali gowns, um, understands couture, understands craftsmanship. Hi, Anna. Hi. You look great, love. I love the hair. The hair is fabulous. Right? Yeah. Oh. So Anna, um, in college, we used to kind of coin her as the empress, right? Because she was just that good. And she's always been that good. So Anna, <laughs> <laughs> so Anna, tell me, I know we talked briefly um, before the show. What are some of your favorite looks? So I think for me, I don't know. Met Gala for me, like, 2010 prior was always my favorite in the last couple of years there's been a few here and there it's been like lady gaga always she always brings it right. I think 2019 we agree we all agree like 100 definitely in my top five i have a favorite from sarah jessica parker like black and white i love the crisscross in the back like this big trailing and i mean you can't do anything without mentioning alex Senator McQueen prior to his death in 2010. So I think he was always the ruler of the Met Gala ball for me. And there were so yeah. many that I just can't. I think the other one I think I said was like Blake Lively 2018. Okay, so let's there just was a stop for a second. Like, um, red carpet gown she wore. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if we can just stop and have like a Gossip Girl moment and just make some Met connections. I don't know how many of you out there watch Gossip Girl, but I love Gossip Girl. Okay, good. I love Gossip Girl then and I love Gossip Girl now. Um, so if we can put up that Blake Lively piece. Um, if you are a fan of Gossip Girl, Blake Lively and her crew used to have lunch on the steps of the Met. And of course, you know, in the new season, the kind of remake of it, they are also kind of sitting on the steps of the Met. And so for me, seeing Blake kind of on the carpet in that that amazing number was was great. Like I loved it. I was here for it. Um, I loved all the beading, all the jewel tones, the appliques and the gold embroidery. And then of course, that really great headpiece I loved. Um, so shout out to Blake Lively and Gossip Girl. Um, and then kind of talking about the new Gossip Girl, Christopher John Rogers did an entire fashion show um, just for the show, which I thought was amazing. And you know what? I think he's another up and coming that I would like to see on the carpet, right? Like Christopher John Rogers, like what he's done with Target, um, what he is doing in fashion. He's, he's an up and coming icon, I believe. Um, I love to see him, if not tonight, in future events. But one of my favorite, and this one, Anna, that we talked about, Katy Perry. Yes. Right? This is so your aesthetic, right? I want you to talk about it, though, because I could see you completely redoing this and having, like, a brand new breakout moment, right? <laughs> 
Well, first of all, it's red, right? Of course, like right? <laughs> Second of all, it's a Valentina gown, which is another of my favorite. Mm -hmm. My Italian. Shout out. Yeah, I was going to say shout out to all the Italian designers. I just love it. It's so ethereal and it's flowing and it has texture and, you know, I mean, you're going to make an entrance in this gown. So oh, yeah, that's for really sure. what I'm always for sure. about. Absolutely. You have to make that entrance and do it. We're the gown that's going to do it. Absolutely. Let's go to some other looks, because I know we all had a long list of looks, but mm -hmm. we didn't really pull some together. One of my favorite ones was this one. Of course, you like. So this is where Andrew and I part ways. Ah. Um, I, it was just, it was too much for me, right? How could this be too much? Oh, this head, it was the head. Like, I just. Jared, Jared and his head, carrying his head, I think, not only was it just pomp and circumstance and arrogant, I just, it was just too much for me. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like I always want to say to Andrew, do you, would you like to carry your head around? And I would say yes. Exactly. And I would have this on. Like, I would definitely imagine, you know, we go to the Met, right? And I have this on my head. And then I have a mannequin of myself with this on. Like that would be, that would be incredible. That would be it. That would be a moment for sure. Okay. Okay. What's what, what's one of your what's another one of your favorites? Let's okay, wait. Before that. before we move on, girl, ladies, ladies, what do you what is your take on Jared's look? And I believe this was Gucci. Yes, this was Gucci. It, it's not for me, but I but I I, I like the outfit without the head. <laughs> Ah. Okay, Anna. <laughs> no. Yes. Mm, maybe. Okay. We may have lost Anna there for a moment, but that's okay. I can be by myself. <laughs> that, that's, that's totally fine. If you if you're watching, throw a comment in there. Uh, tell me, did you like that look? Jared Leto, yes or no? Um, and really quickly, if you're watching live, the Vogue stream has officially gone on with Kiki Palmer and Ileana Glazer. So if you're watching on Twitter or you're watching on the website, definitely move over there and take a look. We're going to keep talking. And we're going to keep showing um, just some of our favorite looks and going back through the history. And the I time. believe I, I'm watching now and I believe that Anna is wearing De La Renta. Maybe is that is that a good guess? Am I, I guessing I correct? She might be. I really love the bottom of the gown. I think it's very flattering on her. Okay. So we're gonna try. We're gonna have Tech pull it up and see if we can get this on the screen for you guys. Um, but if you're watching on Twitter or you're watching on the website, the Vogue website, you can definitely see that live stream. It's got a ruffled feel at the top. Um, I mean, is there a reason you're? She's always going to wear a dress. Go ahead. So we've got some people are joining in with the comments. This one comment, I absolutely love it. It's different from what I look for and definitely outside the norm. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I really, I particularly like the mustard colors in the, the print. Um, and the way that it goes with the the tones and shades in her hair. I think mm -hmm. that, that's yeah. beautiful. And I think Anna, of course, is wearing her signature. Is she wearing a double stack necklace? She, I believe yeah. that she is. That is, of course, a signature for Anna. But guys, shout out to Kiki Palmer wearing her rocking this afro. She Correct. looks stunning. I like she does it. Look stunning. You know what I think when I ever it's I the see back Kiki of the gown Palmer. for me, honey. Yeah, I was getting ready to say that. Um, she's gorgeous, but whenever I see her, I always think about a young Angela Bassett. Okay. She played her daughter oh, in, nice. uh, the, the Spelling Bee. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I think she looks gorgeous. I love her hair. I love what she's doing. We're going to pull it up so you guys can see if you haven't 
already looked at it. We are going to share that with you guys here to see yeah. Ileana Glazer and Kiki Palmer. It's the best of the dress for me, like 100%. Yeah, it, I love it from the front. Great. I just wish there was a little bit more um, color breakup, but okay. I'm just obsessed with the back of the dress and her beautiful posing over the back of the dress. Like, I'm here for it. But I'm a Kiki fan as well, so. Yeah, yeah. I am definitely a Kiki Palmer fan. I can't wait to see what's coming up, who's coming up next. So you can see that gown there. Um, what are you guys' thoughts about Ileana Glazer? We're going to get that one up on the screen so everybody can see. What are your thoughts about this one here? I hate it. Okay. It's got feathers. You don't like the feathers? I, the placement is terrible. The shape looks like a sack. I, I... <laughs> well, tell us what I, you think, man. <laughs> I, I, I'm not here for it, right? Like that, it does nothing for me. The handbag is bad. She's not selling it. I feel like maybe she should have put her hands on her hips. Um, but it's a no for me. Okay. I say bring bring back Juliana Rancic as a correspondent uh -oh. because she give me, I don't know. I just, I, I'm not feeling it. We've got another one who's saying she's not a fan of that look. Uh, Liz, what is it about that look? Do you like it? I am actually looking for that look right now. I'm in the hashtag um, on Instagram Absolutely. looking for it. So you definitely can find a lot of things on the hashtag. If you're watching live, the red carpet actually tonight is not red. It is, is that like a gold color? Yes. Yeah, yes. I think that's what Liz was telling us earlier. Um, as our New York correspondent who already kind of got a really good first look at what's happening at the Met and the setup. So it's different for this year. Mm -hmm. And That's of course, guys, um, if you were tuned in earlier this evening, uh, Liz explained about, you know, what that setup looked like mm -hmm. and about how many feet that red carpet was and how short it really is mm -hmm. until yeah. you get to the steps of the museum. So Liz, explain it one more time for those who are just joining in. Absolutely. Well, I think that in, in our perfect world, right, in our mind, when we all think about how big the red carpet is and, you know, just how luxurious the life must be, right, um, we definitely would imagine like a football field, you know, for a red carpet um, opportunity. But it really is, I would say, at the most, you've got about maybe 20 yards, 30 yards, but you've got to coordinate all of these big dresses and all of these big entrances in there before you get to the uh, stairs, right? And then it also is not as wide as I would have thought, right? When I went over and kind of looked at everything, um, if you go to my Instagram stories and to um, form to fashion Instagram stories, you'll see some of the mm -hmm. footage of me like walking across the street. And so I really felt like it was like at, at the most, two sidewalk strips, right? So you're trying to get all of these things and your team like in there um, and everything was draped in this beautiful, oh, the honestly, the pageantry of the tenting alone uh, into the entrance was phenomenal. It was just so cool. Um, and it's in this beautiful um, creamy beige that is just, it's really going to really pop all of the colors because a huge thought process is how they pop all the colors. And then I walked right. down over to the Mark, which is actually the host hotel. Um, and that's where a lot of the stars get ready. Um, so they're actually about two blocks away from the Met, uh, the Metropolitan Museum as they're getting ready. So, you know, that it's very easy for their car and their entrances, but also for the security. Because when I was down there, they were already like locking down um, the five blocks surrounding and already had like the search dogs out and everything so that they could make sure everyone was safe as well. Thank you so much for that. So a lot of people don't really realize how small the space is mm -hmm. and how you really have to get out of the street because it's right on the street. Right. Right. Yes. It's right off the right. sidewalk. You have to get out of your car, get your team under the tents and then start walking and then perform. Correct. 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 Yeah. And, and hope that there are no additional it just it's the level of preparation that I don't think that any that you know it's it's literally your own wedding. <laughs> right, right, right. 
Monday, normally the first Monday in May. You know, this week it closes out Fashion Week. Um, it, and honestly, it's really a beautiful close to Fashion Week as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So who else is coming up on the carpet? Who else do we see? So if you're watching the live stream right now, you can see Kiki Palmer is interviewing Adam Mosery from Instagram, his wife. I don't have any details on what he or she is wearing, but you can see she's got some flowers in her hair. This is definitely giving me like mini Ripperton vibe, mm, right? The, okay. the baby's breath and the hair. Um, we're gonna share that with you guys. I could have oh, gone I with one of the. I saw the feather gown, guys. Oh, did you see what it? What do you happening? think? It's a train wreck. It's awful. Like it is all bad. Uh, I mean, I see somebody uh, said, nice. "What did they say?" I don't think it flows. The feathers look out of place. It was just bad. It. it I didn't like it. It makes her look heavy, and she's not a heavy girl at all. No, uh, listen, no dig on her looks. I'm talking no. about the dress. She's beautiful. The dress, is, the dress is awful, right? But that's why we get to kind of do this. We yeah. get to kind of give. But talking about um, the current look that's on live right now. Okay, we're going to share that with you guys. Right? So I'm loving, I am loving the 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 baby's breath, right? I am not loving the baby's breath and the headband. Okay. Um, His suit, I love. Let's see if we can catch it. We might have just missed it. This is Kiki Palmer and Alana there. But that's the dress that we're referring to with the feathers on the shoulder. Um, Liz, she's got a middle part. What do you think about the hair? It's um, messy like the feathers. Oh, gosh. Okay, I'm sorry. That's okay. I don't love it, but I don't mind it. I, I just feel like with the middle part, we have to be careful because it draws so much attention and smack to the middle of the face. And for this look, I feel like she should have had like more of like a twisted, you know what I mean? Just all around. Yes. You know, yes. just give me some more, honestly, give me some more feather in the hair. You know, you know what? I could have gone with that or I could have gone with something, you know, a little bit more cropped, a little closer. Yeah. Um, you know, give me like just, an just even on both sides. Yes. Then, you know, I mean, give, give me, give me something. I think modernize it a little bit. Do you know what I mean? Yes. I think it could have been very Josephine Baker esque, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Where yes. she could have kind of sculpted so that hair to kind of make it make it make sense, right? I, I think if we could have pulled that hair back, I think she's wearing a great earring. Um, I do love the earring. Yeah. But the, the hair and the feathers to me are fighting with each other, and I don't know who's winning. And no, what are one. Your thoughts? no one. If we have to say, is the hair or the feathers winning, darling, no one is winning. Uh oh. T tap out. Right. And that's horrible because she's gorgeous. I like it. And but I was every, every woman deserves her opportunity to be bomb in the spotlight, right? So, like, that's really, at the end of the day, it's your opportunity <laughs> to be bomb in the spotlight. Right. So, Anna, what do you think? Uh oh. Are we good? Are we still on? We may have lost Anna one more time. So uh oh. It's a it's a yes I mean, for Kiki. It's a no for Elon. Like I can do. There she goes. One more time, Anna. Go ahead. I think we may have lost her one more time. Oh, there she goes. Anna, give us a thumbs up. Okay. So, Anna, what was your thoughts about Ilana Glazer one more time? Is my hair? Still there. I like it, but go I think that if you're going to do it, but you should go full 20s flower, and I would have done the winged eyeliner and the red lipstick. I think it would have pulled it all together. I uh, and I agree, and that's why I said if she would have did it cropped right and really kind of gave us that roaring twenties, true to the entire look, polish it. I love the wing. You know what I mean? Like just give it. If you're gonna if you're gonna give it, commit to the entire look. Um, it could have been a really great nod to the twenties. Yeah. Um, if done right, but this wasn't this wasn't done well for me. It's a no for me. Okay.
So who else is showing up on the carpet? So I think some people are still coming in. Okay. Um, of course, you've got that queue that you've got to go down. You've got the long tent hallway that you've got to go down. My favorite thing. I think we're getting bad Let's feedback. <laughs> I agree. Okay, so another look coming down the carpet last year. Uh -huh. I know we talked about men's looks, right? Um, one of my all-time favorite men's looks was Billy Porter in his debut at the gala. Okay. Um, right? I know Liz loved that. That this, was on your list, Liz. This Isis feather kind of number, the Isis wing. Um, we've all done this in pageantry. Mm -hmm. um, we have all kind of put this on a girl, and it has been an aha moment for them. But what I think was a breakthrough moment for Billy Porter, and that year he had so many moments um, just with the show Pose and just all of the work that he's been doing. Of course, you know, I am familiar with Billy, Billy Porter from Broadway. Mm -hmm. um, of course, he's done one of my favorite Broadway musicals, Pinky Boot. But this was a moment for him. He came in kind of almost like it got, kind of gave you Cleopatra, right? You kind of really thought about Elizabeth Taylor and how they kind of carried him out. Um, and we are, I am looking now um, at some of the most iconic looks that they're showing. There is some synergy there. Another men's look that I love, um, rest in peace to Chadwick Bosman. I know. I think this was one of the most stunning beautifully executed looks um on a man Absolutely. this was the fashy guys and it was spectacular i would wear it um head to toe the shoes the cape the the suiting the gold details the beading it was fit for a king um we had the pleasure to see his costume at uh savannah college of Art and Design's Museum of Fashion and Film. Mm -hmm. On yesterday, we were able to witness uh, his extraordinary um, costume that was designed by Ruth E. Carter. Um, and that was a phenomenal exhibit. So as my number one, and then to be able to see his work um, or her work featured at the museum um, was really, really an amazing experience. So we've got some people coming up this kind of champagne-y golden carpet. Mm -hmm. If you're watching the live stream, we've got someone coming in on the red carpet doing the photo junket, the press junket. We're going to go over. And sometimes your feed could be um, a little on delay. So hit refresh if you're watching the website. Um, if you're watching on Twitter, hit refresh as well. We're going to share this with you and tell us what you think. All right, guys, don't forget to join the party. Um, reach out to Liz, Andrew, Anna, or myself. Um, we are watching the comments. So we really want to know what you guys think. We want to know what you guys, you know, ask us questions. This really is going to be a super stellar party. And don't forget, grab a water or a cocktail. Um, and let's have some fun tonight. So right now, it looks like this is Tom Ford. Tom is always just so exquisite. Well, you know what? He gets it, right? He yeah. he understands. Um, he is, in terms of his speech pattern, right, is he's the Halston of our time, right? He, he's got a very uh, particular cadence in which he speaks mm -hmm. um, that I do thoroughly enjoy. Um, but he understands men's tailoring like, like no one else. I mean, a, a good... Tom Ford's suit will go a long way Absolutely, um, in my book. And I think Tom understands his personal aesthetic and what looks good on him. He knows his body. Um, but of course, he's a designer, as he should. Absolutely. So we're going to do it while some more people continue to arrive, while the live stream is answering some questions. We're going to move on to another look here. So you're talking about um, 
Alexander McQueen, one of his major supporters was Jack and Guinness. Mm -hmm. So now let's talk about feathers, right? I, I know I mentioned that I love a good feather number. For me, this is feathers done well. Daphne Guinness knew the assignment, right? She understood, pay homage to my friend and one of the most exquisite pieces he's ever done. Yeah. So that is how you do it and do it well. I love that. I am looking at what looks like a NASCAR rainbow number. I don't know who that is. I'm not That's sure. Not she not she just got to the bottom of the stairs, so we're going to share that with you guys. Liz, it's the Daytona 500 on the carpet. Uh oh. It could be. I mean, the cars go fast, so maybe they drove up there. Well, I need her to go. I need her to speed it right along. Uh oh. Not speed it right along. <laughs> So right now you can kind of see that hallway, that tented hallway where people have to go down. Here it is. Liz, what do you think about this? Who's, who's I'm not this? I'm a fan. I just, no. It's, I, I and again. I the juxtaposition that was, that was trying to be achieved here. Um, but I, I, so let me say this. I love all the colors that they used and I love those colors together. But I just feel like if you're going to curate such a high contrast look, then I just need I need something that brings it together, you know. And I would love for that that fabric to be different, just a different outfit. Yeah. I yeah I am I you know what it is I love the flow of it the the flow is beautiful like the movement the body of it is great um, I just. I, the gloves, in, the, in, the, in my, head, just, in my head, if we could have done that same movement and done the center like black and white and then did the, the black and white pattern on the sleeve, right? I would have got I would have got into that. Absolutely. So if you're tuning in on the live They show, just showed Marcus Samuelson. Mm -hmm. um, He's a chef. Who is a celebrity chef. Um, I'm kind of digging it, okay. right? I, I, I kind of, I like it. Um, it is definitely, I like the pattern. Um, it's true to him. I, I think it's, it's, it's good. I don't mind it. It's a pattern suit. He's wearing like a fedora. I'm here for it. I, I, I can take it. I believe yeah. his wife kind of is wearing like a metallic number. Mm -hmm. And who's this on the carpet now? I think this is Timothy Chamolet. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is Timothy. He's one of the co-chairs. We're going to try to get him on so you can see the suiting. I mean, I, Timothy, wanna stop I my life. Uh, he a little too lightly? There he is in the middle. I think that we are all used to a theme that lends mm -hmm. to more dramatic fashions. And I and think, you know what, this may be a precursor tonight to what we're gonna see. We we really just may see off the runway mm -hmm. fashion. Um, right. Which is interesting, but I, I also think we're gonna see a younger silhouette. If you look at those pants, they're a little baggy, mm -hmm. right? So he, of course, is a part of the millennial culture. So the structure and the tailoring that we're used to seeing it's still there, right? But we're used to seeing a Tom Ford. Yeah. Right. Um, and, you know, I don't know if you guys saw, he kind of got down on the steps and kind of, you know, did the gang gang thing, right? So we'll see what tonight's going to bring. Yeah, yeah, look at, okay, so Liz, can I say this? Valentino has said this before. If it's at the ankles, it's not an evening gown. And you both know how much I 100%. despise mm -hmm. a gown that does not touch the floor. So again, Daytona 500, it's a no for me. You know, we can just race our little butts right on out of here because that ain't it. <laughs> Goodbye. Uh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. I, so more celebrities are starting to arrive down at the bottom. We've got someone in a pink number. Let's share this? that with you guys. And I'm, we're waiting on the official word on what they are wearing. Um, I don't mind. I don't mind this. I think um, 
just historically speaking, right, if we talk about the Kennedy years Mm -hmm. um, and when Jackie Kennedy contributed to the Met, this kind of reminds me of that. And I'll I'll show you guys um, really quick um, that number that is is very Jackie Kennedy-esque. Okay, here's Timothy Chalamet. I love the black and white. He's wearing right? Nadia Ackerman. I love it. Yes. Right? It's good. Yeah. So this is Jackie, right? At at one of the galas um, of the past. And of course, shout out to Vogue. Um, this is their most recent book um, on the gala. So it goes all the way up to camp. But this is Jackie in pink and gloves, and it's stunning. It's gorgeous. It always kind of translates well. So I'm, I'm here for the pink look. Yeah. Yeah. And she also was a co-chair. She was a chair for two years back in the 70s. Yeah, I like the white. I love that. I love that he kind of turned the collar over. Um, and again, I love to see when people make fashion their own. Mm-hmm. I think that's super yeah. important. That you don't just wear wear the suit um, or let the suit wear you. I, I really right. I think it's a hit for me. I mean, for the for the second men's look that we've seen tonight, well, mm-hmm. third because we Tom Ford was first. Um, I like it. Absolutely. I like. I love the double breasted. I, I love where it. I love the baggy pants. I believe he's wearing sneakers with it, mm-hmm. which is in true Hadid fashion to have a suit with sneakers. With sneakers, something yeah. That he he does on his own. So styling it with a, with a client like Timothy definitely works for that look as well. So right now you can see Kiki is greeting that pink number that we were referring to. What and a chaparelli pink, honey. Yes, I like it. And the gloves as well. I am here for it. I like it. Again, I think it's, again, that nod towards, you know, Jackie Kennedy. As soon as I saw it, that was the first thing that I thought about. She's wearing, you know, these opera length gloves that I think are great. She's got the middle part. The hair is good. The earrings are good. It's not overly embellished. It's it's good. I, 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 I'm enjoying it. I like it. Absolutely. She's got that middle part that you were talking about, Liz. Mm-hmm. She's got and it's done well. Um, it's so beautiful and simple. And you really are focusing on her wearing the dress. Right. Yeah. Her so entire that's style is done room. to really bring you into the fact that she is the star of the show. The length of the earring, the middle part, um, you know, the slight perfection, you know, in her makeup. You know, she she's not giving you tons of color. Um, I saw em- Emma Chamberlain earlier on the um, red carpet. And she did um, a, a neon eyeliner that I okay. saw, saw a lot at Fashion Week as well. So, you know, you've got a lot of variations in how to, you know, curate a look. But this this one is very sophisticated, well put together. The edit is beautiful. And you know what I like? I always say this. I'm a regions person. So if I'm doing jewelry, I do it in a region. So she's got earrings on. Uh but no necklace. She's just got the gloves on. It's not overwhelming with the jewelry. Um, you know, and sometimes you can have a region going on and then nothing anywhere else. And so I like that right. she did that. Like you said, it makes you focus on the dress that she's wearing. So let's really go back to color, right? I know we're talking about what we didn't like about the color, but Carolyn B. Maloney mm-hmm. um, is making a statement on the carpet or has already made a statement on the carpet for equal rights for women. And I, you know, campy, this is this is a campy look um, that she did. I am looking at it right now. Um, and and it's, it's almost an antarja is what it looks like. Mm-hmm. I believe that is an antarja um, where it says equal rights for women. And I think that's a statement. That's a very poignant statement that mm-hmm. women should be making and speaking up for themselves. Absolutely. And, this is how you do it, right? I, I think this is, it's its a little campy, again, but I like that she took tonight to make a statement. And we're going to try it's to get great. that on for you guys. It's actually take a really break. well designed, too, which is, even no, it is. you know what I mean? It is. And and I do, I do, yeah, I, I, 
I'm here for it. The way it streams around her body, the way she was mm -hmm. able to really let you know. Um, so the devastating thing would be if someone was trying to make a statement, but the design wasn't clear as to what the statement was. Mm, and so, okay. ha so the way that this was done, you really understood both that she understood camp, which is an American, like it's an American staple, you could say. It's a staple, uh -huh. uh, It's a principle of Americana, okay? Yeah, Sarcasm absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> um, but you really understood the statement that she was making. The design aesthetic is beautiful. The colors actually look fabulous on her. The hair is great with it as well. I love that she didn't, um, she didn't, she played it well. You know, the entire thing is just really played so well. I love, let me put it up close so you guys can see. I just yes. love it. I think mm -hmm. it's so fun. Yes, I'm looking, so I am looking at it as well. It, so great. It's good. Yeah. It's good. And this is the one that I have. Yes. Um, can you guys see that? Right? Oh, like, I love that. Side. Yes. So I got a little side number um, that I really, I like it. I, I think this is how you make it. looks good from every angle, which is important yeah. for red carpet because cameras are seeing the body from all of the angles. Right. But have we noticed the tambourine, right? This is a part of, again, like that Americana camp, mm -hmm. right? She's carrying this, this tambourine um, that's got, you know, chains hanging from the symbols. So it's great. I, I think this was a hit tonight. I, I like Agreed. this one. I think any chance you can be political um, with your fashion, no matter what the statement is that you want to make, no matter what side of politics that you're on, I think it's important, right? Use your voice, use your fashion. Right. And I think yes. she did it well tonight. Absolutely. Um, did you guys see Nia Dennis from UCLA um, really rocking it on the red carpet doing- I so just, I just looked at that. It's I love the red, it's, white, and blue. I just think this is magical. What a magical. It's like this kind of jumpsuit kind of mm -hmm. number. But you know what? Again, I'm going to say it again. Tonight really may be the millennial takeover. Okay. I think This it is. may be the night that millennials really say we are not going to go with um, the norm, right? We're not going to wear a gown. We're going to express fashion and do fashion the way that we have. But I think what's important about taking note to that is that is what American fashion did for the fashion industry. Correct. You know, yes. after the war, we begin to do fashion our way. Oh, right. honey, she is showing out. Listen. She is showing out. And she is in Adidas by Stella, by Stella McCartney on... It's great. Listen, she's just... I, I don't know if you guys it. can see it, but she's got um, almost calf-length sneakers mm -hmm. um, that have crystals on them, right? So they're all bedazzled. And of course, but again, guys, let's think about this. And Liz, you know, this is what the kids are wearing. If you it want is. to take note in fashion, this is it, right? This is what they're wearing to the club. Mm -hmm. This is what they're wearing out. So I, I'm here for it. I do like it. I love that she's rocking her braids. I love you know, the detailing in her braids, the earrings. I think the beauty look um, is good. So I'm... Agree. Yeah, it's a 10. And I'm just a fan. I'm a fan of people doing something different. I'm also a fan of the fashion industry's relationship with social media and the fashion industry's relationship with entertainment and sports. I just well, love I to see um, kind of how how we all kind of work as like an accoutrement to one another. Yeah. You know, when you think yeah. about art well, and entertainment, we all need each other. <laughs> exactly. And right, right. Because without one, there's the other one cannot, you know, evolve. Oh my gosh. Tonight, again, it goes to the millennials, guys. Mm -hmm. I am going to call it for the millennials tonight. I don't think we're going to, we may see some fashion, but I think tonight is about making a statement, right? right. Yeah. People are, are making statements tonight and they really are going to be expressing who they are and their relationship to fashion. And that's yeah. really what American fashion is about. Yeah. It really is about yeah. making a statement and, and putting yourself into fashion. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. But I think too, when we talk about the relationship um, of social media to fashion, 
let's really kind of shout out to Instagram mm-hmm. um, for partnering with this event tonight. So Instagram IG should be blowing up Correct. Um, because this is their night tonight. So yeah. we're going to share a bunch of different looks from this year. Um, as you know, you can follow them on Twitter, but Vogue is doing a live update on all of the looks. Mm-hmm. So we're going to share that with you guys here. You can see Kiki. Jerry is talking. Lorenzo. Oh, mm-hmm. I, I'm a huge Jerry Lorenzo fan. But again, guys, take note that the tux is out this year, right? The formality of what say, we know of the Met is completely out. So right. to our students, to our viewers, if you are watching tonight, tonight is all about expressing your style, your fashion. This is America. And right. this is what American fashion is it's really about. all about. That's what it's about. This well, self-expression that we're seeing tonight. Evolving. And, right. yeah. and we so, are we have to pull back into a space where we are a world leader and a global influence in fashion. Agreed. Um, because Agreed. we we have kind of regressed um, in the past oh, yes. few years. Absolutely. So, and and I think we we know the rules. We follow yes. the rules, and now we're breaking them. Right. Learn yes. the rules to break the rules. I had a teacher used to tell me that all the time. Right. And we well, it's are who we, breaking it's who we, it's who we the rules. Have always been. Yeah. Yeah, but I think right now this is the revolution, and yes. I want to see more of this self-expression tonight, mm-hmm. um, because I think that this is really sparking the next generation. Correct. Because Correct. believe it or not, believe it or not, Vogue needs for us to support right the next fifty years. Absolutely, hundred percent. So I I love what we're seeing tonight so far. We're getting some really great color. Mm-hmm. I, I'm really, really, really loving the self-expression of fashion tonight. So we've got some of those looks coming up in real time. We're going to go through them. And you guys can probably see this on your own. This is right off of the internet. Here we can see Timothy Chalamet here wearing Hadir Ackerman. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know how many of you. I love what David had on. This was super cute. I love the big shoulder. David from Schitt's Creek. Mm-hmm. It's 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 good. I mean, he's got a handbag, which I love. The boots, I love. Come on, Tom. I, oh, but classic. We 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 know that Tom is is a classic, classic mm-hmm. man. There's Tom Honey. Ford, Tom, of course, wearing Tom, does Tom me every Ford. time. He really does. So this I mean, was what you were just... talking about, Jay, earlier. Correct. Yes. I mean, he is known for his exquisite design, but he is also known for his exquisite eye when it comes to creative direction. And when you look at the way he presents himself, when you watch his documentaries, when you study how he has attained his uh, knowledge and the, the amount of himself that he puts into his line, you understand why when he steps out, it is utter excellence absolutely we're going to keep going through some of those that already hit the carpet here right so again if we can find a shot of david rose um at the met tonight again making a statement david rose is making a statement so talk a little bit more about it because i know you've got it down you've got it on yours i'm gonna find it too yeah, we're gonna we're gonna find it. Of course, everything is coming in live stream as yes. well. This is actually such a great way to do this. I think just to be able to talk it through, um, and also like just to connect with it, so that we can hear all of your opinions, and so that we all can just have a great fashion chat. Correct. Absolutely, and we love all of the comments that you guys are putting on. So keep adding those comments in. So someone is saying, "I'm a sucker for pink." Referring to that Brooklyn, the dress that Brooklyn wore earlier. Yes. Stunning. Here's a comment referring to Maisie Williams made her dress in a sustainable fabric. I mean, if, if we were going, would, would we make her? Um, well, shout out um, to our dear friend, Liz, of course, you know, Elizabeth Tran, um, who is all about Teens Go Green and has a phenomenal program. She mm-hmm. just... Um, 
talked about sustainable fashion um, and kind of recreated her gown out of um, a hazmat suit when mm. she was in her most recent pageant for us say i believe for florida so yep. i mean i think i think right now kids are thinking about it right millennials yeah. are thinking about it. our students are thinking about it we want to save the earth we really are kind of looking at sustainability in a different way i know a lot of retailers are creating an initiative um for that so i think it's good um, it's it's challenging, and I will say that it's it is hard. It is not easy. Correct. Um, but I commend every designer and everybody who is really trying to look for more sustainable ways um, to source fashion. I 100%. think it's, it's yeah. you guys. I just found out who the Daytona 500 dress is by, and I'm devastated. Who is it by? Christopher John Rogers. Uh, no, uh, no. Um, oh, well, let's. Uh, he killed I my girl. That's the mom. Devastated. Uh, it's it's not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're gonna pull it up so that you guys can see it I, one more time. Here it is. Oh, it's actually man. The is it. I just in. love him. I love him. I just I, you know, Stephanie and I have been going to his shows when he was kind of off off Broadway. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. and uh, when his collection with Target came out this year. We were in six different states with all of our friends on eBay, on Poshmark, on Target.com, everywhere, trying to find every single one of those dresses. And we just oh, absolutely yeah. I mean, loved them. So again, I think maybe without the gloves, it could have been a number. Uh, uh, I think I don't the know. length works against us as well. Correct. I think the gloves stopping at, at, at the, the bus line it's just it's wrong for me i love christopher john rogers i stand by what i said early this evening 100%. i hate that um but let's take a moment and look at dan levy's look again make, making a statement i don't know if you guys can see my okay. screen yes i'm obsessed um, with him always of course i'm a huge shit right, fan his, as well he's but handsome. I'm always, I, I love again i love does. the boot look yeah yeah i love the boot look I love the the sleeves. I I mean I'm here for it. I am here for these statements and people expressing their feelings and how they feel. Um, oh my gosh, Amanda Gorman, a goddess, absolutely a goddess. goddess. It, guys, we're gonna try to get a picture. Here she is live. Jewelry stunning, headband stunning. Mm -hmm. I love her. Oh, look at her makeup. Look at the the look at the beauty. Definitely, again, wow. a nod to the millennial, right? That that is something that we are. Wow! Seeing oh my, honey, right? What classic you is a leg? You cannot see this leg. Mm -hmm. Can you see it? Do you see yeah. the whole number? She's got a slit. But, 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 but wait, guys, wait, wait. Let's let's look at this old Hollywood glamour. The train is connected to her wrist. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, she Man, looks like a star tonight. She does. Wow. She's a rising star. This is our generation's. My, I will, I will kind of be bold enough to mm -hmm. say she is our generation's. My, um, Dr. Maya Angelou, absolutely, hundred percent stunning. I love the braid. I love the headband, the handbag. Okay. I'm I here. Oh my God! It's a book. It's a book. Yeah, her handbag. It's a book. It's a book. It is. It's a book. Bravo. And I, I love, love the, the height hair. of the bun on top because mm -hmm. she, she. That tells me that she's probably short. So what they did was they built height and a full look, a long look for her, which is also why they gave her a long braid so that she had a long look everywhere. They built her, they built in sleekness to her look. They made her tall. They gave yep. you a leg. She And that's, she, and once and you get that, that leg action, everything on her. Agreed. That leg is really going to elongate you, right? When you get a yes. really good split that hits in the right space, this is a winner again the jewelry i love it's subtle her beauty look i'm here for it absolutely her look her Everything. little kind of crown it's Head it's good toe. and the book to so yeah. tonight guys if you like on to instagram um i will be sketching out some of my favorite looks from this evening um so definitely you're going to see this amanda gorman look i'm going to be doing 60 second you, sketches all night that we are probably going to start doing that around seven. Okay. So 
I know, you know, we've got some people on watching. Guys, shout out. Tell us what you think. Give us your opinion. Yeah, I'm I'm feeling Amanda Gorman's look. Absolutely. I'm, I'm here feeling for it. it. The color is good. The hair, I mean, everything put together works really well for her. And she's only 23, it. 24. So, yeah. of, of course, she is part of that Gen Z group. Um, and they're really taking over, for sure. They're really Quite showing and asserting themselves into fashion. Correct. As they should. Yeah. Correct. As they should. I think we've got to, we were taught to make fashion very serious, mm -hmm. right? We come from a completely different school of thought. Um, it's got to be precise. It's got to be on point. It's got to be tailored. It's got to be perfect. But we're seeing a lot of young people. Yeah. Um, I think Amanda kind of did that nod to high glamour. Mm -hmm. But her beauty, she did it her way. Right. 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 She kind of did the stoning and the glitter, but also with her hair. Right. Yeah. She she did something that is true to her. Right. And true to our culture. Right. Um, with wearing that long braid and it looks stunning. And yes. so but I, I'm 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 excited, guys. This is a good night so far. Very hundred percent. Put well, some of I love you guys so much, and I have Liz, love being thank, with each thank you with so you. much. So listen, Liz, before you go, before you go, one of my kisses. Please tell our viewers where they can find you, where they can follow you, and definitely get some of the dopest style advice um, on the East Coast. But I will go as far to say globally. Um, oh, I love you. Love you. Find you. <laughs> well, you guys can follow me on Instagram at I am Liz Everett and at Styled by Liz Everett. I am just so grateful to have shared this platform with you guys. Thank you guys for inviting me. We have to do this more often. We, we do. We fun. do. So this is the debut of Coming In Hot. This will be a meetup spot for fashion icons, creatives, fashionistas, stylists. And we are going to talk all things and everything, fashion, glam, and we're really gonna give the people what they want, yeah. right? Well, we're honey, here. anytime, because you know oh, our team. Oh, honey, no thank you. Sure. All right, Liz, enjoy the rest of the night, and we'll be following along to see what you come up with and what you see for the remainder of the evening. All right, love you guys. Night. Okay, guys, so this was our coming in hot. So if you stay tuned, Andrew and I will be coming in and out all night long, giving you updates, giving you our feedback. Of course, feel free to follow along at Form to Fashion um, on our Facebook and our Instagram. Also, if you want to see some of these great fashion illustrations that I'm getting ready to crank out tonight, mm -hmm. be sure to follow us at the paper bar company and that's also on instagram absolutely you should see um it rolling across your screen um in a few so there is that handle there right so if you can see that form it's to form to fashion and you may be watching on the form to fashion page but, correct correct well. or you may be watching on our personal page but we're going to be here all night giving you live updates, live feedback. We hope that you loved our show. We hope that you are going to keep watching, right? And looking forward to more insight and more of our opinion of what we expect to see. I think this is Sweetie. This might be sweet. So, of course, the live stream is still going on. Mm -hmm. They're going to be on the carpet until 9 o'clock when they close the doors and everyone moves inside to actually start Correct. the uh, the evening, the gala with performances and speeches and things like that. So guys, flip in between back and forth. Right down at the bottom of the screen, you can see our handle, the Paper Bar Company, where Jason is going to do some live yep, sketches. I'll be live sketching tonight. Of some of his favorite looks. Right now on the screen, there is a stunning dress, um, all hand beaded. So I love those pearls. Keep going in back and forth, looking at the feed, checking us out on Instagram as well. And we're going to see you guys more on Coming coming In Hot. This is going to be an amazing opportunity right. for you guys to connect with us and really to pick our brains in yeah. terms of when, yeah. it, when it comes to the different ways that we think, but also 
our opinions on fashions. And of course, thank you so much to Liz, our correspondent in New York, as she ends Fashion Week. We also had Anna on, who is one of our fabulous contemporaries as well. Jay, why don't you give us a good sign off? All right. So guys, again, don't forget to log on and follow us at Form the Fashion, also at the Paper of Our Company. And remember, programs like this are definitely here to lead with education first. So I hope that while you guys were tuned in tonight, that you learned a lot of amazing fun facts about the Met Gala and who and why it came to be what it is today. Also, stay tuned um, on both of our social platforms so that you can learn more about offerings that we have. A lot of you may know that we have African Americans in fashion history, 40 icons who helped to shape the industry. Mm -hmm. A lot of those icons like Stephen Burroughs, Ann Lowe, Wesley Tan, have been a part of this major, major moment that the Met is getting ready to unveil. Absolutely. And it's so exciting to be able to see that we truly are a part and in being included in the American history. Right. So we're going to leave some links for you guys. Follow us on social media. Get to know us better. Understand that we love fashion. And our philosophy for Form to Fashion is always to lead with education first. So without further ado, enjoy the rest of your night. Remember... <laughs> have a cocktail get dressed up and watch the met with us have a great night guys bye thanks for tuning in everyone <laughs>